What is up guys, Cubic here, back again with more Vital. We're coming somewhat to the end of this series, at least to the end of the really important major parts of getting to know Vital. But now we're getting to the more advanced things and uh, yeah, should be fun. Time to get into the advanced settings of Vital. Hello, please excuse me. We are back here again with the initialize preset of Vital. And today we're going over the advanced tab as well as some of the voicing management stuff because I didn't go over that earlier because I guess I consider it advanced options even though it is kind of essential to every patch. But I feel like when I started out as a producer, I didn't really know or care about this stuff. So I consider it more advanced. So yeah, quickly I'll go through these since they are also kind of related to some of the stuff in here. So in regards to voices, this is basically how many notes you can play at once. Apparently you can play 32 notes at once. So I'll press as many as I can on my keyboard. Um, so let's say uh, you make a bass and you just want to put on legato and you, you want every time you click a note for it to only play that note and no other note. Now, if you have it at one voice, if I press this note and then I press another note, it will switch to that note. It won't let you play more than one note at a time. The bend is the amount of pitch bend range. So if you go into your, if you have a MIDI keyboard and you mess with the pitch bend knob, or if you go into your DAW and you pitch bend in the MIDI, and this is telling you how many semitones up or down it'll pitch bend. So. Two is for very subtle pitch bends. 12 is a good one if you want to make risers or very dramatic pitch bends. And obviously you can go up to 48, which is insane. But you know, if that's what you need it for, fair enough. A uh, velocity tracking knob just makes it so that if you automate the velocity in your DAW, or if you have a MIDI that messes with velocity, I'm pretty sure that makes it so that the velocity affects the volume and punchiness of all of your sounds. And then you can always map things to velocity to have more specific velocity effects. Then we've got spread, which this is really cool. Basically, it controls the amount of stereo width for the entire sound. So let's say I put on chorus which is very stereo. But I don't like how stereo it's making everything, or maybe I wanna just see how this sound will sound mono. You bring it all the way down, and you hear how kind of shitty it sounds in mono, so then you realize maybe I want to pull that back a little bit, alter the delay. But so yeah, basically you control how much width is coming from this from the synth um and then there is a special feature this is a hidden feature and i will be doing a video going over all of the hidden features at least that i've found so far available to us but one of them is um if you click spread you can change it to rotate which basically allows you to rotate the stereo spectrum between like mid side and left and right. I don't know the best way to explain it just to show you. The best way I can show you is if I do this, we'll make two saw waves, one pan to the left, one pan to the right. So right now you should be hearing a lower pitched one in your right ear and a higher pitched one in your left ear. Now we go to rotate. Should be opposite now. Oh wait, no, it's not opposite. Over oh, here, it's opposite. So it's I don't completely understand like where on the knob it's adjusting it, but basically you just gotta kind of finely scrub through this, and it just kind of alters the phase of the entire synth. And I don't completely understand like the intentional use of it other than to, like, I mean, I just, I honestly haven't used it enough to really find like good uses other than to just have complete customization over like where everything is sitting in the stereo spectrum, which is pretty cool. Now, the one thing I have noticed, unfortunately, is that spread and rotate, like if you want to set the spread down here and then change the rotate, you can't do both at once. You have to choose, do I want to limit the spread 
or do I want to change the rotation? I do hope that is a feature that they add later on where maybe you can adjust both at the same time, have the spread lower, but then change the rotation within that spread. That would be really cool, but currently not a feature. So you choose one or the other, but it is really cool. I found that it really has a strong effect when you're adding on different effects that affect the stereo phase of your sound or add stereo width to your sound because it can almost affect like the tonality because you have control over the phasing and everything. So it's, it's actually really cool, especially if you're using things like chorus, delay, combs, filter, stereo LFOs, definitely mess around with it. I've never seen any other synth with that ability. So as far as I know, it's pretty exclusive to Vital. Then over here, we have the amount of glide. So the best way I can show you what glide is, is basically normally how notes would act. You click one note, you click another note, it hard cuts to that, right? And it re-triggers. If you turn on legato, first off, if you're holding down notes, Whenever you change notes, as long as they're overlapping each other, it won't re-trigger anything in the synth. And um, when you turn on glide, there's like a pitch glide. Think of it as like if you were like fading different notes together, but through pitch. So if I turn it up more, because this is basically controlling the time that it takes to glide. So as you can hear, it's pretty dramatic. It gives it kind of a pitch bendy. Turn it off completely. Turn it back up. And then the, here's the slope, which controls how gradual it is. So if I turn it all the way down, it'll just be much more like subtle until the end of the glide. Turn it all the way up, it's more instant. So yeah, th those are very subtle things, but they are very specific uses for them, especially for instance, if you're making re-spaces, glide is, is very beneficial, as well as leads. You wanna make very kawaii, like pi pitchy sounding leads. I don't know how to explain this. This is something you just wanna experiment with and uh, find when it suits you, basically. Definitely just whenever you're making leads and stuff or, or whatever it is, just experiment with turning on legato, glide, messing with the slope, seeing how it affects your sound and kind of cool characteristics it can add. So next we got always glide, which basically means that if you have that off, it only glides if you overlap notes like that. But now if I turn on always glide, no matter when I click notes, whenever I change notes, it's gonna glide. So so that just gives every single note this kind of pitchy like envelope when you first click it, which can be really fun. Then octave scale is a new feature I haven't seen anywhere before that I still don't completely understand, but basically it makes it so that the glide time affects how long it takes to glide between octaves. So <laughs> like with a, a decent amount of these features lately, I don't really know how to explain it. I can only show you. So I'm gonna click a note down here and then click a note in the higher octave and you'll see how it changes with octave scale enabled and disabled. So that's with it enabled, disabled. It's a lot, it's a lot faster disabled versus enabled. So yeah, now you know how it affects it and you can apply that knowledge however you'd like. Okay, moving on to the more advanced section. So we've got quite a few things going on. So at first with every oscillator that's enabled, you have the ability to turn on or off note tracking. Note tracking disabled means doesn't matter what note I click. Um, it just depends on what pitch I have it on or like whatever I use to affect this oscillator, it does, it stays static. Doesn't matter what note I press. High res wavetable is some sort of oversampling within the wavetable. If I'm being honest, I don't notice a big difference, but maybe depending on the wavetable, it has some sort of legitimate effect. I mean, I'm sure it can't hurt to have every, 
have high res wavetables on. But now getting into the special part about this, when you turn on unison, so we just got a normal amount of detune. Actually, let me initialize this. So yeah, here. We got a normal amount of detune, right? And at first look, you wouldn't notice all of this and you would think this is all I have to control the detune. Well, luckily for us, they've got a certain amount of unison customization that I've only seen available in like phase plant. So we've got quite a bit going on here. So first off, you can use different types of unison, which is really cool. And I'm gonna go through all of them right now. So there's the center drop 12, which sounds like basically the center voice, it drops it down an octave. So you can feel in the center, it's a little lower. Center drop 24, down two octaves. Very, very useful. Um, octave pitches up the voices. An octave. Two octaves pitches them up. Two octaves. Power chord makes the voices a power chord. Times two, times two power chord. I actually don't know what a power chord is. I'm sorry, but you can just tell by the way it sounds. Then uh, makes it a major chord, which is gonna be very helpful minor chord and then this one basically makes it so the voices don't pitch up by notes but they pitch up by harmonic series and then right here we've got it where it just pitches them up by the odd harmonic series and so with stuff like that it's really cool if you start automating some of these other uh, features which I am about to dive into next though we have um, the detune range I believe in semitones. Basically, if you turn it up to 100%, it's like how far do you want to take the detuning? So you can get pretty weird with it and it's just up to you to experiment. Then next, this is where stuff gets interesting. Actually, no, wait, next we got normal stuff like the blend. So how much do you want to blend these unison voices into the dry signal? And then how much do we want this all to be stereo? So yes, you can affect like the detune power and, and like how things blend in terms of like mid and side over here. So that still affects it even though you have stereo all the way down. Now for this next couple features, I need to show you by using a wavetable that has different frames as well as putting on, well, actually we'll do that next. So basically now there's these three knobs, which I've never seen available in anything else. And I highly recommend modulating them whenever you have the chance because you can get really cool effects. But basically what this is is table spread, which makes it so that every voice, every unison voice is added on to your signal is at a different part in your wavetable, a different frame. So here's the difference like without it on. So that's really cool and it can just give your unison and your detune some very unique tones. But then we get even weirder when you have the spectral spread and distortion spread knobs. Basically spectral spread puts all the voices at a different place in whatever spectral morph you have on and the distortion does it with whatever wave morph or warp. I still don't like, I've seen that these both called different things in different places, but I consider this spectral warp or spectral morph and this one wave warp or wave morph. But basically, so this one would be affecting the FM. So like when I turn this on, every voice is at a different place in this random amplitude frame. And then distortion spread, every voice is FM at a different level. And so then if you start automating some of these things,
you can get just some weird ass shit, some weird ass shit going on. So yeah, those are the different features available in terms of customizing your unison. I'll go through it real quick one more time. This basically makes every single voice of your unison take place at a different point in the wavetable. This affects all the unison voices where every voice takes place at a different place in the spectrum wave morph of your wavetable. And this is every one takes place in a different part of your wave morph of your wavetable. So yeah, you can really completely change up a sound just customizing this unison area. Then moving down here, we've got some even more advanced stuff. So basically, first we've got the ability to oversample the sound in the plugin, which just basically it allows for a higher quality sampling of your sound that removes things like anti-aliasing and just slight like small imperfections that happen with digitally processing sounds but beware that it does increase your cpu load so just use that at your own risk and then over here we've got an oscilloscope let me turn off this horrible sound okay we've got an oscilloscope and as well as a frequency spectrum and then down here we can change whether or not various displays throughout the plugin display frequency units based on semitones or hertz. So for instance, if we go to the filter, the cutoff can be either at hertz, we change it to semitones, it'll be via semitones, um, which is very helpful depending on which one you prefer. Down here we've got the global transpose and global tuning. So if you want to do some global pitch bending or like master tuning, whatever, um, right here, we've got uh, MPE enabled. I think it stands for MIDI polyphonic expression. I don't really completely understand what that means, but I guess it's something that has to do with certain special MIDI keyboards, such as like Rolly Seaboard, things that have a lot more expression types beyond just clicking a note um, so that's out of my realm but if you have a mini keyboard that uses anything like that i guess that's the setting for you over here we've got tuning which took me a while to understand and wrap my head around but basically if you don't know too much about music theory and and how scales are built and the frequencies paired with notes in music basically there's a apparently an entire universe of of new options for which frequencies are tied to which notes. And so basically, the best way I can show you is if we change one of these, listen to the same note between two octaves. So the default is like the standard tuning you would get in any synth that you use. So we're gonna play the same note, but two octaves apart. And it's gonna sound familiar starting off. Same note, right? But then we change it to Pythagorean. You can hear that there's like a slightly different timbre of the sound. We change it to this, just seven limit. So like, I don't know how easy it was for you to hear that, but basically all that the tuning does is gives you the ability to set a different tuning for the frequencies of every note, which can end up giving you really different sounding chords and completely change up the scale. There's certain tuning files where basically it gives your synth scales that like don't only have 12 notes in an octave. Like there's scales out there and, and tuning out there that gives you like, 19 notes within one octave and they just they're set apart at different ratios and stuff so and i highly recommend looking deeper into tuning and the frequencies associated with different notes and the ratios between different octaves but this can give you entire new types of microtonal opportunities within your music and and give cores weird new flavors so something i'm definitely going to start looking deeper into and and luckily vital gives you the ability to retune the whole entire synth then over here we got note priority so basically this is what happens if you exceed the amount of voices you have so we'll have it on one right now so i can't click more than one note so it's basically choosing do you want to just completely kill the other note when you change which is way cleaner than stealing which um, I guess there's kind of like a fade going on, which kind of can cause some weird phasing or just like some rougher. Yeah. 
it's very subtle but uh, i found kill to just be a lot cleaner in general and then for voicing this is basically you control which voice notes it prioritizes when you exceed the amount of voices so if i turn it up to three voices basically newest means whatever the newest notes that were chosen those get the priority over like so like let's say you click four notes right but it's only allowing you three voices well whatever the last three notes you clicked out of those four notes those are going to be the one prioritized in the voices oldest on the other hand it's going to be whatever the first three notes you clicked out of the four notes total that you clicked and then if you put it on highest it's going to be whatever the highest notes played out of the four notes those three are going to be chosen with lowest it's whatever the lowest and then with round robin i guess i feel like that's just kind of randomized um, i don't know completely but um, yeah so this just kind of controls how that works it's a very niche uh, setting but it's nice to have that available to you if necessary and yeah that pretty much does it for all the advanced features you should have a general understanding at this point of this entire synth and uh, I hope that those of you especially new people who don't completely understand synthesis and don't have a lot of experience working with synths I hope you watched all the way through because this is all very important info to really completely understand the tools you're working with and to unlock its full potential. So with that being said, leave a like if you enjoyed this video and it helped you out. Subscribe for more music production tutorials and comment down below if you enjoyed this, if I got anything wrong, what you want to see from me in the future. And stay tuned for more breakdowns of Vital, such as the Wavetable Editor and what all these different modes and their functions are. So yeah, my name is Cubic, and I'll see you in the next video. Deuces.